all of the headlines this week are going to be centered around the fact that the S&P 500 is off to its best start in over a decade. But what everybody seems to be forgetting is that we are coming off of the worst fourth quarter since the 1930s. And if you go back just six months ago, the S&P 500 is still down over 3%. All of the U.S. indexes were positive last week, with the Russell 2000 leading the way up over 2%, and now up over 14% for the year. And the S&P 500 was up about 1.2%, and is now up 13%. Foreign and emerging market stocks were also positive last week, with foreign market stocks up just under a percent, while emerging markets were up over 1.1%. And now foreign and emerging markets are both up about 10% for the year. Today we're looking at a chart of the US dollar. And this US dollar index tracks the value of the US dollar versus other countries' currencies. So the chart that we're looking at in front of us is an ascending triangle. And normally this is a bullish pattern because as you can see based on the bottom blue line, this index keeps making higher lows. So if this pattern is confirmed, then we're looking for a break above that 97.50 level, which is the top blue line on the chart. And if we see a breakout above this level, that could mean a stronger U.S. dollar. A stronger U.S. dollar makes U.S. goods more expensive and our imports become cheaper. But this can also hurt multinational companies and commodities are directly related to the value of the U.S. dollars. So a stronger U.S. dollar tends to mean weaker commodity prices. Now, if we don't see a breakout above that top level, then this index may drop, and that would mean a weaker U.S. dollar. Now, a weaker U.S. dollar means that imports become more expensive, and U.S. goods become cheaper to other countries. This is also better for multinational companies, and as I mentioned before with commodity prices directly correlated to the U.S. dollar, this could mean that commodity prices, such as oil, gold, and silver, could get stronger. Last week's news began with Larry Kudlow, the President's National Economic Council Director, going after the Federal Reserve, telling them that they need to immediately reduce rates by a half of a percent, and they also need to stop reducing the size of their balance sheet, citing that they're going to be hurting economic growth in this country, and also that they made mistakes that they should have never taken the Fed funds rate over 2% and that the White House is going to continue to pressure the Federal Reserve for the rest of the year to not only just pause interest rates, but also start reducing them. The next news story we wanted to cover was some surprisingly good news out of China, as their manufacturing activity actually rose in the month of March. This hasn't happened for the past six months, so it's starting to show that the government stimulus program that was initiated is starting to work and also Optimism around a trade deal with the United States is starting to generate some activity. And lastly, we had some more news in regards to Brexit, as Theresa May said that she's going to look to resign before the next round of negotiations, as Brexit continues to be a disaster. This upcoming week, they're going to be proposing alternative exit plans for the UK as they still try to leave the European Union. This week is a big week for economic data as we have the first quarter and the month of March numbers starting to come in. And the highlight's going to be Friday with the jobs report. Also, we're kicking off the month of April and historically, April's been one of the strongest months of the year as over the past 20 years, the S&P 500's averaged over 1.7%. Thanks for watching today as we strive to give you everything you need to know about the markets in five minutes or less. If you're watching on Facebook, please like and share our video. And if you're on YouTube, please like and subscribe to our channel.